All right, well, good morning, everyone. It is uh, good to be with you today. Today, we are reading Revelations chapters 7 and 8, and uh, then Isaiah uh, 59. And so let's go ahead and jump in. Uh, after this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth to prevent any wind from blowing on the land or on the sea or any tree. Then I saw another angel coming up from the east, having the seal of the living God. He called out in a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm the land and the sea. Do not harm the land or the sea or the trees until we put a seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. Then I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 from all the tribes of Israel. From the tribe of Judah, 12,000 were sealed. From the tribe of Reuben, 12,000. From the tribe of Gad, 12,000. From the tribe of Asher, 12,000. From the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000. From the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000. From the tribe of Simeon, 12,000. From the tribe of Levi, 12,000. From the tribe of Issachar, 12,000. From the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000. From the tribe of Joseph, 12,000. From the tribe of Benjamin, 12,000. After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength to be, be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, who are they? And where did they come from? I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And when he opened the seventh seal, there was a silence in heaven for about half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and seven trumpets were given to them. Another angel who had golden censer came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense to offer with the prayers of all God's people on the golden altar in front of the throne. The smoke of the incense, together with the prayers of God's people, went up before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and hurled it on the earth. And there came peals of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning, and... An earthquake. Then the, then the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared to sound them. The first angel sounded his trumpet, and there came hail and fire mixed with blood, and it was hurled down on the earth. A third of the earth was burned up, a third of the trees were burned up, and all of the green grass was burned up. The second angel sounded his trumpet, and something like a huge mountain, all ablaze, was thrown into the sea. A third of the sea turned into blood, and a third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. The third angel sounded his trumpet, and a great star, blazing like a torch, fell from the sky on a third of the rivers and on the springs of the water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters turned bitter, and many people died from the waters that had become bitter. The fourth angel sounded his trumpet, and a third of the, su a third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon and a third of the stars, so that a third of them turned dark. A third of the day was without light, and also a third of the night. As I watched, I heard an eagle that was flying in midair call out in a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the trumpet blasts about to be sounded by the other three angels. Okay, and we'll pick up the rest of those uh, tomorrow. I'm sure you will want to uh, to tune in tomorrow as we continue reading about the trumpet blasts. All right, so let's go ahead and jump over to Isaiah, um, <clears throat> Isaiah 59. 
And let's read that together. Sin, confession, and redemption. Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. For your hands are stained with blood, your fingers with guilt, your lips have spoken falsely, and your tongue mutters wicked things. No one calls for justice. No one pleads a case with integrity. They rely on empty arguments. They utter lies. They conceive trouble and give birth to evil. They hatch the eggs of vipers and spin a spider's web. Whoever eats their eggs will die, and when one is broken, an adder is hatched. Their cobwebs are useless for clothing. They cannot cover themselves with what they make. Their deeds are evil deeds, and acts of violence are in their hands. Their feet rush into sin. They are swift to shed innocent blood. They pursue evil schemes. Acts of violence mark their ways. The way of peace they do not know. There is no justice in their paths. They have turned them into crooked roads. No one walks along them. No one who walks along them will will know peace. So justice is far from us, and righteousness does not reach us. We look for light, but all is darkness, for brightness, but we walk in deep shadows. Like the blind, we grope along the wall, feeling our way like people without eyes. At midday, we stumble as if it were twilight. Among the strong, we are like the dead. We all growl like bears. We grow, we moan mournfully like doves. We look for justice, but find none, for deliverance, but it is far away. For our offenses are many in your sight, and our sins testify against us. Our offenses are ever with, with us, and we acknowledge our iniquities, rebellion and treachery against the Lord, turning our backs on our God, inciting revolt and oppression, uttering lies our hearts have conceived. So justice is driven back, and righteousness stands at a distance. Truth has stumbled in the streets, and honesty cannot enter. Truth is nowhere to be found, and whoever shuns evil becomes prey. The Lord looked and was displeased that there was no justice. He saw that there was no one. He was appalled that there was no one to intervene. So his arm, his own arm, achieved salvation for him, and his own righteousness sustained him. He put on righteousness as, a, as his bless, breastplate and the helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garments of vengeance, and he wrapped himself in zeal as in a cloak. According to what they have done, so will he repay wrath to his enemies and retribution to his foes. He will repay the islands their due. From the west, people will fear the name of the Lord, and from the rising of the sun, they will revere his glory. For he will come like a pent-up flood that the breath of the Lord drives along. The Redeemer will come to Zion, to those in Jacob who repent of their sins, declares the Lord. As for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord, my spirit who is on you, will not depart from you, and my words that I put in your mouth will always be on your lips, on the lips of your children, and on the lips of their descendants, from this time on and forever, says the Lord. Well, that is a, a you know, that is a, a proclamation that God gives to, you know, to the Israelites, um, and yet I, I would, I would hope and pray that it would be a proclamation that God would give to all who have been even grafted into the, the chosen people of God, because when God makes a covenant, uh, God is faithful to it, and and this is such a, a powerful and very important covenant. It, you know, so first of all, he's he's assessing the land and and sees that you know there there is there is such wickedness and sin uh, within the land. And you know, verse two of 50, chapter fifty nine says, "Your iniquities have separated you from God. Your sins have hidden His face from you." so that he will not hear. That's one of the effects of sin. It's one of the memory verses that we go through in the Navigator's Growing in Christ, which I would highly recommend if you've not ever done that. That is a that is one of the, the, the premier tools that we use to disciple people is the Growing in Christ used by Navigator. So 13 weeks, um, a memory verse each week, very, very um, valuable uh, tool. Um, but that's one of the verses that we, they, you know, that that's incorporated in there, um, and somewhere in there. I don't think it's one of the verses we memorize, but, but, but one of the results of sin is that that our iniquities separate us from God, and it causes Him to not hear us. And so it's interesting that uh, you know people that are that are are living a sinful life, and they're living opposite of what God wants. And yet, what's interesting, you know, if they pray and they ask, you know, God, would you bless me? God, would you? 
help me if they're living in sin, the, the first and foremost, most important prayer that God will hear is a prayer of confession and repentance. But God's not going to hear, you know, pleas for help. He's not going to hear, you know, pleas for his blessing when a person is actually living contrary to him. And so there's a lot of people that pray, but their, their prayers are not ever heard by God because of their sin. And so it's it's when we when we repent of our sin that it begins then to it removes that veil between man and God, and where He will actually begin to hear your prayers, um, you know. And so it, it's chapter fifty nine is so powerful in 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 saying you know justice is driven back and righteousness stands at a distance. Truth is stumbled in the streets. That's verse fourteen. And truth is stumbled in the streets. When you say that that's a picture of truth today, it's stumbling in the streets and honesty can't enter and truth is nowhere to be found. And, and this is, boys, verse 15, whoever shuns evil becomes prey. So there's people who are shunning evil. And I find that, I find that not only out in the streets, I not only find that with the world, but what's interesting is if you shun evil today, even though some who are even within the church world um, will shun you as well because you're shunning evil and you're making people feel uncomfortable because that's the utmost value today is make people feel comfortable in their sin. And so many even preachers of the gospel um, would rather make people feel comfortable in their sin than call people out as prophets of God are supposed to do, you know, and so, uh, it's it's a very interesting dilemma, and yet verse twenty one uh, gives this incredible covenant. He says, "As for as for me, this is my covenant with them." Um, you know, it says the Lord, "My spirit who is on you will not depart from you." All that God's spirit would not depart from us. You know, that's what the whole that's what the psalmist says: "Cast not your Holy Spirit from me, Lord." Um, and, and he says, and my words that I have put in your mouth will always be on your lips. That's one of the reasons why I tell people, you know, soak in the word of God, read the word of God, memorize the word of God. We're going to be coming to the end of the book of Revelation here within just a, you know, another week. And, um, and we're going to be finishing it, but don't stop reading the word because the word is critical. He says, I'll, I'll put my, my, the words that you know, my words um, that I put in your mouth will always be on your lips. We want to hide God's word in our hearts. We, it, it's so critically important. And he says, you know, not only be on your lips, but on the lips of your children and on the lips of your descendants from that time on and forevermore. And that's what we want. We want God's word on my lips and my heart and my children's lips and in their hearts and in their children's because without it, they will, when, when there's a lack of the word, a lack of the word of God, there is that's where sin and all kinds of uh, you know deception from the enemy creeps into people's lives. The only thing that is keeping us from that is the truth of the word of God is revealed by God. He's spoken his word to us so that we can we we can um, you know be insulated, if you will, from the lies of the enemy and from the lies of the world. And so. Let's pray that that God, his words will be on our lips and will remain there and his spirit will remain on us as well. That we will be able to continue to, uh, to live the lives that God has called us to live because he's called us out of this world. And he's called us out of this world and into his kingdom to follow him. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you so much for this day. Thank you, God, for the opportunity we have to read your word. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for your, uh, for your word. God, we thank you. We pray that these things that we're reading, Lord, even as we're reading of Revelation and these the seals that are broken and the trumpet blasts that are to come, um, Lord, we we see this this future reality, and we don't we don't fully understand all of it of like when exactly it's going to happen and and uh, how it's all going to play out. But Lord, we we do believe God that you you hold the future, um, Lord of the world, in your hands. And we know, Lord, that in the same way that it was, it was, it was all created by you, God. It will all be wrapped up um, in the end by you, and uh, you will, you will lead us. You will usher us into a, a new season, a new time, 
and uh, uh, new heaven, new earth. And uh, Lord, the, the, that's the promise, God, that you've given to us, that those who overcome, those who uh, are, are washed in the, the blood of the lamb, Lord, that we will, we will experience the redemption of God. And so, Lord, help us to, to know that this world is not our home, that this world is perishing. It's perishing and it's in the process of perishing. And Lord, you've got the, you, you've got the time clock is, is ticking. Um, and so Lord, help us to live um, in light of eternity and uh, help us to live knowing that, uh, that, that even as we raise children and they raise children, God, that help us to hold on to this world very, very loosely, Lord, um, and hold on to heaven with all of our might. And uh, God, would you put our put your word, Lord, in in our hearts? God, would you would you pass that on and and allow that to be uh, the word that's in our children's um, mouths um, as well, and and in their children, and in their children's lives, Lord. And so I, I pray that for my own children. I pray, God, that would you, um, you know, just continue that redemption in in their life the, that you began with me, and the forgiveness of sin and and the uh, the redemption. And restoration. I thank you, God, for it. I thank you, Lord, that when you rescue people, you rescue, um, you, you create a new um, legacy, God, uh, for them. And I thank you, Lord, for um, just the blessing, God, of, of plucking me out of the fire and, and being lost. And uh, Lord, for um, ordering my steps uh, to, to new ways and new days. And uh, Lord, I pray for my children, God, that they'll walk in your will, walk in your way, and they'll never deviate from it. I pray that your word will be hidden in their hearts and on their lips. And God, that they'll pass those on to their children, my grandchildren. And uh, God, that they will walk in your ways and that they will know you and that they'll not deviate and they'll not leave it. Father, it's the most important thing. It's the absolute most important thing to me. So Lord, I pray that you would, God, please, you know, protect their hearts. And Lord, I pray, um, you know, for... You know, for those who are reading with me today, God, I'm sure that that is the most important thing for them. They want their they want their children to be in heaven with them. They want them to uh, uh, to know you, God, and for your word to be in their children's hearts and on their lips. And uh, Father, for their for their grandchildren to uh, to come to know you and uh, to lead and guide them, and that your word would be on their lips and never to depart. And so, Lord, help us to be faithful. Uh, to make sure that we're passing these things on. And uh, Lord, help us to um, create a, a culture where our children and our grandchildren uh, receive your word and walk in it. And, and Lord, we pray you would protect them, protect their ears, God, what they hear um, from this world. Protect it, Lord. May, may they not be confused, God, by this world. Uh, protect their minds and their hearts, God, in Christ Jesus. Lord, we thank you again for uh, for the opportunity we have to read and, uh, Lord, to learn and grow. And, uh, Father, in this world, the, there are so many hardships. So, Father, I pray for for those who are reading with me today, any hardships they might have. God, may they, may they trust in you, Lord, with all their heart and uh, lean not on their own understanding, but in all of their ways, in every area, in every place, in all of their ways, acknowledge you. Lord, in, in knowing that you will direct their paths as they acknowledge you, surrender to you. And so, Lord, I just pray your blessing on each one today. Father, help us to walk in your spirit so that we will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. We'll walk with you and be victorious as you've called us out to be victorious. We pray these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much for uh, reading with me. Um, you know, congratulations again on just on reading, on your dedication, on your commitment. It's going to pay off as uh, as God as you hide God's word in your heart, and in turn you make sure to hide it in your children's heart and in your grandchildren. Uh, these are serious times, very serious times, and we need to make sure that we are walking in the ways of God um, because there's a great deception that is sweeping across the land and across this world, and we don't want to be deceived. All right, so uh, bless you. May the, may the Lord keep you and uh, may his face shine upon you and uh, give you grace. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you tomorrow.